On this week's show, the Georgia Southern men and women's basketball teams both in action at Hanner Fieldhouse. We'll let you know how things go, and we also have some Georgia Southern football news as well. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. Welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, basketball full swing. We finally got the guys home. They'd been on that crazy six-game road swing. Finally got a chance to come home. Things went pretty well uh, this past Thursday. And then Saturday, a little tighter game. Had to get down to the wire before Tukey Brown with some last-second heroics. Let's begin with the guys. Looking pretty good right now, and taking care of business at home is always a key. Yeah, they definitely took care of business against Arkansas State. Really made a, a laugher out of that when it got out of hand early, and the Eagles, to their credit, uh, last year a couple of times, some big leads, leads turned into some tight games at the end, but they didn't do that. This is a veteran team that knows how to put teams away, but then two days later you flip the script, and it's a Little Rock team coming in that's still rebuilding. They're only at four wins this season but it's one of those games where they just start to hang around and shots aren't going down for Georgia Southern. A uh, 10-point lead turns into a deficit at times in the second half, but again, to their credit, they show the maturity. No one gets down, actually able to play a couple of guys, a couple of key guys through foul trouble, keep them in the game, making smart plays. And then, as you said, Tukey Brown showing why he's a preseason All-Sun Belt collection, uh, uh, selection probably an odds-on favorite to be player of the year at this point, and he certainly added that resume, hitting a buzzer beater to give the Eagles a win. And, you know, going into those two games, Mike, we did the show before the Arkansas State game, and you mentioned how a key would be Monty Glenn and the way he's been progressing. If they can get anything from him and if they can get another guy to step up, well, here's Quan Jackson filling in nicely. you got Monte Glenn. It looks like he's improved a lot. And then Ike Smith did – Chip in with some points and some production. Yeah, I think Ike is trying to get up to, to speed a little bit. Definitely going to take some time. A lot of game reps needed to really get up to uh, where we've seen he can be over the last season. I think practicing is one thing, but it's another to get in there, play 20-plus minutes, be able to be the scoring threat that he is. I, I think that there's probably some lingering pain there. Who knows with ankles? But I do think it was a good sign to see him still on the floor with only two or three minutes left in that blowout win against Arkansas State. That at least tells me that whatever percentage he's playing at, uh, Coach Byington and the trainers not too concerned about him re-injuring it unless it's a, an entirely new issue. So that's going, and I think we mentioned it before, some silver lining in that injury is that Quan Jackson, who was getting sparse minutes early in the season, he was forced into a role mostly to try to play defense, but he's picked it up on the offensive end as well, and he's become yet another option for Georgia Southern in that loaded backcourt. And Monte Glenn, as we mentioned, stepping up a little bit, becoming a little bit more of a force scoring. I think he's leading the conference in offensive rebound. And, and averaging almost a double-double every night. There aren't too many guys in the Sun Belt that you can say that about. All right. As for the women, I wish we had some good news to give you. They did hang around a little bit in the Arkansas State game, but Arkansas Little Rock, who is currently leading the conference, that was pretty much a blowout from the get-go. Yeah, they knew it was going to be tough. Both of those Arkansas teams do well on the women's side year in, year out. I think you saw a little bit of improvement maybe in the Arkansas State game. Definitely got the offense up, which has been the issue all year. The, the shooting percentage really is just hurting them. They've never been a big team, never a great rebounding team. So when you do that and then the shots aren't falling, that tells me that you just aren't going to get the number of chances that other teams are getting against you. And when you're already digging yourself in a hole, you're on a losing streak, things can turn around and go south really quick. But hopefully they can put some baby steps together, a few good minutes here and there. Hopefully that will transition into a good half and then a good game. And the good news this week, even though they're on the road, definitely a step back in the level of competition they'll be facing. All right, well, let's get out. We saw, showed you last week uh, the Arkansas State game, but let's take a look at the Little Rock game. The Georgia Southern women looking to snap their eight-game losing streak, hosting conference-leading Arkansas Little Rock. The Trojans in control. Tori Lasker layup. She'd have 13. Ron J. DeGray later finishing on the break. Trojans up by 22. The Eagles try and hang in there. Alexis Brown gets this one to fall. Amira Atwater will then penetrate and hit the runner in the lane. 
Aaliyah Belcher will add this three-pointer, but the Trojans in command. Three more for Lasker. And Kira Shepard comes through with three of her own from the top of the key. The Trojans roll 64-34. In the men's game, Georgia Southern and the Trojans. And the Trojans out hot. Cameron Cochran, three of his 14. Demir Hadzig then hits a three of his own. But the Eagles storm back. Ike Smith gets the runner to fall. The friendly bounce. Quan Jackson then on the break blows past the defense for the layup. He'd have 14 points. Mike Hughes with three. The Eagles up by five. Monte Glenn comes through with nine points and ten rebounds. A nice move here. The lefty lay-in. Tigers, the Trojans right back though. Oliver Black comes through with two of his 15 in the game. Tukey Brown heats up. Three of his 15 as he pulls up and knocks it down. Ike Smith, one of five Eagles in double figures. And he'll hit the fadeaway here. Moments later, nice ball movement and Jackson hits the corner three. The Trojans coming back with Black. Get to get within two. Coy Simmons answers before the half. This one eventually settled on a brown three at the buzzer and Georgia Southern wins 72-69. Thompson. Everything's fine. It's going to be no problem. I'll have you done in a few minutes. My name is Tracy Nordhaus, part owner of Complete Car Care, and I want you to come see me. All right, so up next for the Eagles, they go to the beach and they go to the mountains. Uh, Thursday night, they're at Coastal. Saturday at App State. Hopefully the weather cooperates and they're not having to fight snow up there in Boone. We know that can be tricky this time of year. All right, well, Mike, before we go, some football news and the coaches continue to come in. He said, well, I don't th I think Coach Lunsford said maybe one. Well, now we've had four new coaches ha uh, come on board since the coordinators were hired. It's going to be pretty much a almost a totally new staff under uh, Coach Chad Lunsford. Now we've added one on offense and one on defense. Yeah, uh, it looks to me like with the new coordinators coming in before the new year that Coach Lunsford's willing to sit down with them, talk about what they really want, how they envision each side of the ball working, how it's going to mold into what Coach Lunsford wants to do with the team as a whole. And I guess what they came up with is, you know, you've got one or two guys from the old staff on each side of the ball that they're content with, but they wanted to go in a different direction, especially on the defensive side, switching from a 4-3 scheme into a 3-4. It might be that there were some good coaches on staff, but they aren't quite proficient in that terminology in the coaching techniques. So they go out and get some new guys who can fill those shoes. And uh, Travis Cunningham, the latest to go on the defensive side of the ball, not a specific position named yet, but he will be on the defensive side of the ball. And then uh, Ron Hudson coming over on the offensive side of the ball. He'll be the offensive line coach. And in a trend that we've seen with all these coaches that were being hired, the last staff, a lot of young guys, some of them being in that position for the first time. This time around, it seems like they're going with experience. We talk about recruiting experience, but just overall coaching experience. You know, you look at these uh, bios now, and it's 15, 20, 25 years. So there's a rebuilding effort going on at Georgia Southern, and they're loaded with coaches who have pretty much seen it all and know the work that needs to be put in. On the defensive side of the ball, the coach comes from Gardner-Webb, had been there, I think, 15, 16 years. He, he had been almost a, a lifer, which, you know, again, you've seen the ups and downs of a program, and you know what has to be done and the order that you need to do it. And the offensive side of the ball, we get the offensive line coach from Charleston Southern. We know that they tend to run the ball, and he's had some success in the past looking down his resume with teams that have run the ball, and I think a lot of those have been out of the shotgun as well. A lot of shotgun, a lot of option, just a, a lot of multiple looks, which, again, I think is what the Eagles are going back to with 
offensive coordinator, uh, Coach DeBest, coming over the, the system that he created for Coach Willie Fritz at Sam Houston State that he took to New Mexico, bringing it back here. So all signs seem to point to a very similar offense to what Eagle fans saw a couple of years ago. All right. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.